these apples. Mm, I love apples. Who are they from? They're from our friend Juniper the Worm. She says she wants us to take these apples and make a yummy treat out of them. Mm. What do you think we should make out of them, Sam? Apple cider? A warm apple pie? How about... Caramel apples. Ooh, caramel apples, yum. Caramel is really delicious, and it has that wonderful warm brown color. But if you look at all the ingredients that go into making caramel, you might wonder where that brown color comes from. It's not from food coloring. It's a special chemical reaction that happens when you cook certain kinds of food. And it's so special, it has a name, the Maillard reaction. Why don't we make caramel apples and watch the Maillard reaction happen happen for ourselves. Yeah, okay, but have you ever made caramel before? Well, no. To be honest, I've never made caramel before, but you know what? Cooking is kind of like science. Sometimes you have to get in and experiment to learn something. In fact, there are actual food scientists whose whole job it is to experiment with ingredients and figure out how to combine them to create delicious meals and treats. The scientist who described the Maillard reaction was named Dr. Louis Camille Maillard, and he showed that you need just three ingredients for it to happen. First, you need two different kinds of chemicals you can find in food, proteins and sugars. But what about the third ingredient? Hmm, uh, I don't know. Ooh, it's heat. Mm. Heat is a very important ingredient in a lot of chemical reactions. And sometimes it might look like it's doing a little bit of magic, like transforming ice into water or yummy bread into even yummier toast. If we just dumped a bunch of protein and sugar into a bowl and set it on the counter, nothing would happen. But if we add heat, those tiny little bits of protein and sugar can react with each other and become something new. Something golden brown and perfect for coating our apples with. And that is the Maillard reaction in action. There are lots of foods that turn brown when you cook them. Uh, is that the Maillard reaction too? Oh yeah, that's right. The Maillard reaction can happen in lots of different foods, from caramel to big juicy pieces of barbecued meat. All right, I'm convinced. Let's see it in action. <laughs> All right, let's make some caramel. If we're going to do a kitchen experiment just like a science experiment, we need to make sure we're doing it safely and with the right equipment. First, let's remember to get a grown-up's help with this especially the cooking part. In order for the Maillard reaction to take place, the temperature has to be above 240 degrees Fahrenheit. That could cause a burn if you touched it. Second, let's assemble all of our ingredients. First, we'll need heavy whipping cream. This is an ingredient that comes from milk and has the protein we need. Some table sugar, corn syrup, a little butter, and some salt and vanilla for flavor. Oh, and Juniper's apples, of course. For cooking supplies, we'll need a stove top, a saucepan, a good stirring spoon, and a pan with some parchment paper on it. It's also really useful to have a candy thermometer to help track how hot our mixture gets. Ooh, and something pokey. Ooh, good thinking, Sam. We'll need something to stick into the apples when it's time to dip. When cooking, it's important to measure out your ingredients. In our saucepan, we need to add one cup of heavy cream, one cup of sugar, one half cup of corn syrup, and one fourth teaspoon of salt. Have your grown up slowly heat the mixture over the stove and stir it gently. Once the sugar has dissolved, meaning you can't see it anymore, add the butter and Keep mixing. As soon as it starts to boil, stop stirring. Why? Oh, well, remember when we made rock candy? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you keep stirring, the sugar will start to form crystals. In rock candy, that's the right direction, but in caramel, we want it smooth and creamy, not crunchy. After the mixture reaches about 248 degrees Fahrenheit, stop stirring. Whoa, look, it's happening. You're right, Sam. The proteins and sugars are reacting because of the heat. Our caramel is turning brown. Now we can add the vanilla and let the caramel start to cool. But if it cools down, won't it turn back into cream and sugar? Ooh, good question, Sam. It is true that some things we change with heat can be changed back. like. You can melt a solid ice cube into liquid water and then freeze it into solid ice again. But not everything can be changed back after we heat them up. Do you think you could turn toast back into bread? Mm, if you could, I've never seen it happen. 
<laughs> That's right, you can't untoast toast. And the same is true for caramel. When it cools down, it stays caramel, but it does get a bit thicker. After about five to 10 minutes of letting the caramel cool, check on it. If it looks thick enough, try dipping one of your apples into it. And if it's still too runny, let it cool for another few minutes and try again. Ooh, our caramel looks pretty good, Sam. What do you notice? Ooh, it's golden and gooey. <laughs> yes, it is. I think that means we did it right. Mm -hmm. But sometimes mistakes can happen when cooking. If we hadn't gotten the results we wanted, what would we do? Hmm, well, since cooking is like science, maybe we could do the same thing that we do when our experiments don't turn out like we expected them to. We observe what happened, try to figure out what went wrong, and try again. That's right, Sam. For example, if our mixture turned out clumpy, maybe we didn't mix our ingredients enough at the beginning. Or if we observed a bunch of little crystals inside our caramel, Maybe we kept stirring for too long after the caramel got hot. Or maybe we get distracted and let the sugar burn completely. But what do we do if it doesn't work out? We try again. Exactly. Once your caramel is ready and you've coated an apple with it, set it on the parchment paper so it can cool. When the caramel is nice and solid, your treats are ready to eat. Mmm, this looks delicious. And even better, it was fun to make. You're right. It was super fun to be a food scientist today. And I'm glad I tried making something new. If you'd like to keep experimenting with Sam and me and all of our friends, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And we'll catch you next time here at the fort. See ya.